Aviators, welcome back. In this video, I am gonna give you three tips that will cause you to have better landings, all right? Three practical tips that you can apply right away. The first one is make sure that you have a stabilized approach. All right, every stabilized approach begins with some sort of aiming point. If uh, you can use the aiming point markers on the runway, you can use the numbers on the runway, you can use some pile of dirt in front of the runway, but if your airspeed is stable and your rate of descent is stable, there will be only one, only one point in your view, in your sight picture, in your windscreen that is not moving. All other points will appear to emanate from this one point that is not moving and that is your aiming point. All right, you'll wanna set that and be sort of conscious about what you're aiming at, but maybe at first, just set up a, sta a stabilized descent, and that's a stabilized airspeed, stabilized rate of descent, and figure out which point on the runway is not moving. Start there, learn to see the aiming point. You can manipulate power as necessary. In a perfect world, you won't have to do that very much, but it's fine if you do, because the variables that we are looking to stabilize are airspeed and rate of descent. All right. The second tip, make sure that you transition to a second aiming point during the round out and flare. So approximately one wingspan above the ground, as you're looking at your aiming point, some point about 100 feet in front of it or so will start to disappear under your dash. That is a cue for you to transition your sight all the way down to the end of the runway. A second aiming point now, and you're gonna to start to use your peripheral vision to judge your height and make sure that you're protecting the nose wheel as the airplane settles toward the earth. The third tip, make sure that you're using the Lindbergh reference, right? That sort of sideways view through the forward window because if you're protecting the nose properly, if you're holding the nose off, you're gonna lose all forward references and you need to have data here. Don't be what I call a passenger, right? You're not just along for the ride during this landing. You're gonna use the Lindbergh reference to judge your height, to control your drift and to make sure that you're aligned with the center line of the runway. All right, for more information on the Lindbergh reference, come back to the Finer Points YouTube channel. There's a whole video there on how to use the Lindbergh reference. All right, so let's put all that together. Here you can see Paul on an approach. Uh, he's using the second runway stripe past the aiming marks here as his, as his aiming point. That's the point that's not moving, right? here and when some point about 100 feet in front of that about the top of this stripe here starts to disappear under the under his out of his view then he'll begin to transition to the second aiming point at the far end of the runway you'll see that happen right about now there he's starting to transition and then remember that the camera's mounted a little higher than his eyes so now he's using this Lindbergh reference over here to protect the nose all right there's the touchdown and then we begin the rollout. Remember to fly it all the way to the tie down. So if you find that you're ballooning a lot during the round out and the flare, um, how to deal with that is, is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but try having it take about four seconds. Um, and check out the Jacobson flare. This comes from you know about 35,000 flares. This guy averaged out the time it, it takes and claims that if you begin the flare at the right time, it should take about four seconds to transition to that second aiming point at the far end of the runway. So uh, just to kind of keep you in the ballpark, try that. All right, let's see one more example here. This is Serge coming in. It looks like he's using, this is a little bit of a steeper approach. He's using the numbers as the aiming point. So that's the, the point that isn't moving are the numbers. And when some mark 100 feet in front of that, let's say the top of these white lines here begins to disappear, you'll see him transition to the second aiming point right about now. Good, that should take about four seconds. Now he's using the Lindbergh reference to protect the nose wheel. And there's the touchdown and the rollout. All right, and before I leave you, before I leave you, I think it's important for you as you're gonna judge yourself out there to remember the FAA teaches landings with five phases. If you go to the airplane flying handbook, they will tell you there's an approach, there's a round out, there's a flare, there's a touchdown, there's a rollout. And I think it's important for you to have this granular analysis of your performance so that you're not just saying, oh, that was a good landing or that was a bad landing, right? You can say that was a great approach or that was a great round out and flare, but when I touched down, I was crooked and I completely let go of the nose so I didn't fly the airplane all the way to the tie downs. You can start to evaluate your performance in more detail. So maybe go back to the airplane flying handbook, read that section on landings. Remember there's five phases, 
Don't be too hard on yourselves. We're all seeking the perfect landing. And enough watching this video. Go practice. A big thanks to the sponsors for their support of the channel and to the patrons. Without that support, these videos just wouldn't be possible. Uh, come visit me at learnthefinerpoints.com. We've got podcasts every other week, uh, videos every other week, and you can find me on Instagram at learnthefinerpoints. Uh, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get alerted of uploads, uh, share this among your friends. Thanks for watching this video. You are the best fans on the internet. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe and fly your best.